after the American Revolution, laws in both Virginia and in Maryland are loosened to the degree that more and more slaveholders are allowed to free their slaves. And a number of them take advantage of this, in part because of the declining agricultural and economy that I talked about before, but also because there's, there are fairly active abolitionist societies in both those states, and the pressure they bring to bear also causes a number of individuals to make the choice to send their enslaved people or, or give them their freedom. Many of them, when they got their freedom, moved to Washington, D.C., moved to the District of Columbia, moved to this new city on the Potomac River. What it offered is all the things I talked about before, greater flexibility, greater choices, uh, a chance for a different kind of life. They came here hoping to find employment, employment in the building trades or in the service sector as waiters, as cooks, or as hotel workers. They also hoped to find sort of limited opportunity in the federal government as messengers, as janitors, as maids, in a variety of things serving the members of Congress. And they come here despite the fact that Washington, D.C. is not exactly the best city in the world in which to live for someone who's free and black, because there are laws in the books which very much restrict their choices and their options. For example, uh, in Washington, D.C., African Americans had a curfew. You had to be in by 10 o'clock. You might suffer being arrested. They were not allowed to carry firearms or attend disorderly meetings, as defined by the police, or to bathe in the river. That last one I could go along with. I don't know why you want to do that, but not allowed to do that. And in the eight, by the 1820s, free African Americans are, uh, uh, must register with local authorities to show that they have freedom papers, that they are in fact free or they were subject to being arrested and maybe thrown in jail and possibly put into slavery. But even with, even with these restrictions, by 1830, free blacks were one half of the African American population in Washington, D.C and 15% of the total population of the district. And they then became an important and active part of the communities here. And in fact, you have a number of African American communities that grow up around the city by the 1830s. There was a large group of them located at 4th, and, uh, in 4th Street in the southeast, also clustered between East Capitol Street and Independence Avenue in the city. They were also settled in, the, in sections of 14th and 16th Street uh, in Northwest along I and K Street, not far from where we are today. So we begin to see that there are growing communities of African Americans in this city who are vibrant and creating self-sustaining institutions and organizations. And